This is now the third compound we're going to take a look at. And again, I've provided you with a formula here. So first thing we'll do is calculate the hydrogen deficiency index. And again, it's one half, two times the number of carbons, plus two. So then minus the number of hydrogens. We got eight of those. Minus the number of halogens. We got whoop, two of those. That's a two. Uh, and in this case, two times four is eight, plus two is 10, minus 10 and half of zero is still zero. So in this case, no degrees of unsaturation, no pi bonds, no rings, no double or triple bonds, no rings. Uh, in this case, that's helpful information. We look at the carbon spectrum, and first off, we see three signals. We know we have three unique carbon environments. So even though we have four carbons, there's only three signals, so there's either some symmetry or some free rotation going on. And all three of these signals are down here in the alkane region. Now, some of them are pretty far downfield in the alkane region, so there's probably uh, some that are bonded to electronegative atoms, like the two chlorines in our structure, uh, in this case, uh, but still all in the alkane region of the spectrum. So if we look at the proton NMR, it looks a lot like the carbon NMR, and you're like, uh, aren't these supposed to have like area under the peak and multiplicity and stuff like that? Well, these are both singlets. So in this case, there's no mistake here. This is indeed a proton NMR. Uh, first thing we should look at, though, is the chemical shift. So there's two signals, so two hydrogen environments, and they're both in the alkane region. Now, one's just kind of in the standard alkane region, but again, the second one here is further downfield, and again, to get downfield of three, you are hydrogens bonded to a carbon that's also bonded to an electronegative element. In this case, got to be chlorine, uh, based on our formula. So keep out of mind about these two. Now we'll look at the integration now, and again, that's been done for you. It's a six hydrogen to two hydrogen ratio. That does add up to eight total hydrogens. So that is exactly the ratio. It's not like 12 to four or something, uh, some higher multiple. It is indeed just simply six to two. Uh, and if we start from there, I like starting with multiples of three in the alkane region. So I'm gonna start with those six H's. And again, the most common way that's possible is having two methyl groups that are attached to the same carbon so that can undergo free rotation. So, and in this case, I don't know anything else about this piece of the fragment here. It's a singlet, so there's no hydrons attached to the adjacent carbon here. Uh, and that's pretty much all we know. That's as big as I can make that puzzle piece. So then we'll move on to the next one. And again, we said that's a CH2. We also said, so for this signal, that it's bonded to an electronegative atom, which the only option we have is chlorine. So, and in this case, it's a singlet. So also I know, I don't know what it's next to, but whatever it is, it doesn't have any hydrogens attached to it. So, and that's as big as I can make this fragment as well. So I've got two fragments now at this point. This one on the right has one more bond to make. This one on the left has two more bonds to make. So, and I'm out of signals. I've interpreted them all. So I've got to ask myself, have I accounted for every atom in my formula here? Do I have all pieces of the puzzle on the table? And we do have four carbons, we do have eight hydrogens, but we only have one of the two chlorines. And so I'm just going to put another chlorine on the table here. And chlorine, again, having seven valence electrons, typically only makes one bond, and that's just another puzzle piece. These are our three puzzle pieces. So we now have them all the puzzle pieces on the table. And again, keep in mind that it's only this first puzzle piece that has more than one attachment point, so it has to go in the middle. These other two only have one attachment point each, and therefore they have to go on the end. So in this case, the easiest way to do this is just to simply attach the other two puzzle pieces here to this first one. And it, again, this thing is symmetrical right now, so it doesn't really matter where you put either thing. So I'm going to put the chlorine here up top, and then I'll put the other carbon that's got two H's and a chlorine right here. And this is the structure of the molecule depicted in these two NMR spectra.